A little while ago when we heard the, the news that David Bowie had died, I have to say that was something that hit me quite hard and I did find it quite upsetting. I'm not going to rewrite history for a moment and claim to be the world's biggest David Bowie fanatic. I didn't own every album that he had ever released and I didn't follow him around the world to uh, to see his concerts. I only actually got to see David Bowie on stage once in my whole life and even then it wasn't at a David Bowie show. I saw him way way back in 1984 when he came out and did an encore with Tina Turner on her private dancer tour at the NEC in Birmingham. Now David was only actually on stage for about 10 or 12 minutes. He did Let's Dance and he did Tonight with Tina Turner and even though he was on stage for such a short time it was really obvious to me back then how engaging and how charismatic he was as a performer. One of the things that I did always like about Bowie was the fact that even though not every project he undertook was a, a critical or a commercial success, he always did something that was challenging, that was thought-provoking and that was innovative. And I think they're, they're qualities that we're missing an awful lot now in uh, popular music. Because I was quite affected by the death of Bowie, one of the things that I wanted to do was, in my own tiny little way, I wanted to pay some sort of tribute to him. And the best way I know of doing that is with words. So the day after he died, I, I sat down and I wrote a poem that I'm going to share with you in a moment. However, as I was writing this poem, it started to take on a, a whole different meaning. And it started to, to open up an angle that I really wasn't expecting to find with it. And it started to speak to me an awful lot more, not just about David Bowie, but about how we as artists, as performers, as people who write or, or who create songs or paint pictures or who take photographs, anybody that considers themselves to be an artist, really now more than ever has a real duty and a real obligation to utilize their their art and their medium to really say things that need to be said we live in really dangerous and really challenging times we live in times of racial and religious persecution we live in times when people are intimidated and bullied over their gender or their sexuality, um, over their skin colour, um, over physical characteristics, perhaps over a disability that they might have. And we live in a really, really hateful world. And one thing that I have realised um, is that our politicians, our leaders, our establishment they are not going to do jack shit about it. They don't care. In fact, it really suits their in end game that we, the people, if you like, are fighting amongst ourselves. And I think it's really important to communicate through whatever art medium that, that we decide to use um, that we can do our bit to try and make that better. Now I know a lot of people say that a song or a poem or a novel will never change the world and maybe that's true. But I think if we look back and we look back to things like the Woodstock generation, we look back at the punk rock of the 70s for example, we do have that duty and we have that power to actually confront and provoke and to engage people and to make people think and to make people act and hopefully even if we're not going to change the world with a poem that I write or, or a song that you might play we might at least encourage people to get educated and to get informed and to become motivated 
I would really like to think that we could go back to those days because Christ knows we need to. As I said, it's a really dangerous world out there and we need to be using our mediums and our words to make a difference to that. We need to speak truth to power, but more than that, we need to speak truth to empower as well. We need to reach out to the whole world and together we can be really strong and really united and we can send out a message that hopefully in time will resonate and we need to not stop sending out that message until we get the answers that we want and the answers that the planet needs. So I'm going to read you a poem now. This was inspired by the sad loss of David Bowie but it means far more than that to me now and hopefully a word or two of it may well mean something to you as well. It's a poem that is simply called Eyes Stinging. Eyes stinging. There is no more singing on the spacecraft as it cruises endless galaxies watched by you and I. Songs are a gift, alien, unique, a peek through the curtain of human experience, a hint of human potential, forever unfulfilled, but trying, always trying. Never dying, a symphony in the ether. A trinity of hawks circle the Brandenburg Gate, rising, riding side waves from below. From station to station to salvation, there is always a journey and somewhere to go. Men will always fall to earth, become dust scattered in seas and on shores. But in singular vision there is something more, a delicate melody repeating, a violent chord resonating, a harmony eternal with a million voices singing. With what is gone and with what is left behind, we find the power to be our unashamed selves. No more singing on the spacecraft. The universe itself has become a choir. <laughs>